Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today we're going to discuss a topic which has been trending on certain groups I'm told and I was asked to make a video about it, which is the subject of is it legal, are you allowed to go and do work, uh, say like as a digital nomad in a country on a tourist visa? Uh, what are the tax consequences of that? How does that get set up, etc. Okay, so uh, before we dive into that, if you have not already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, make sure you don't miss out on any of our future videos. We try to produce great content for you every day. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, hey, tell me why. If you uh, enjoyed it also, please share it with your friends. We're trying to grow the channel, etc. We appreciate all the help that we can get. And if you are not at all aware, we do on this channel lots of different things about international business, international tax planning, international structuring, international living, getting residency permits, citizenships, forming companies, bank accounts. We help people to figure out what the best solution for them is and then we help them to implement it. So if you're interested at all in that, feel free to book a call with me, clarity.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer, there's a link below, or you can check out our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com, and you can go and send us a message through there. All right, so this is a really interesting question, right? Uh, obviously we're in a world that is growing with lots and lots more digital nomads, right? And those digital nomads are, you know, it's kind of popular to travel the world and go and maybe you spend, you know, three months in Bali and three months in Thailand and some time in Philippines and Vietnam and then you go over to Barcelona and, you know, some of these places are high tax, some of them are low tax. What do you do? Should you be paying taxes in all these places, et cetera, right? Uh, is it legal to be working there while you are on a tourist visa? So certainly, we know that certain things are clear, which is, hey, listen, uh, it's obviously not legal to work um, like as an actual job as a local within the local system if you don't have a work permit in places that require a work permit, right? That part I think is like fairly straightforward enough, right? Now, the truth is you can still do that. You know, somebody's willing to pay you under the table, et cetera, but you know, not supposed to be doing that. Now, the next situation that can come up is you can say, all right, well, what if I'm not working for somebody else, but I am uh, working for myself and I'm in that place? Is that allowed, right? And here we start to get onto this spectrum of different scenarios, okay? Imagine that I come to a country and I go door to door doing sales in that country, right? I'm making sales on that soil. Is this allowed? Very often, uh, that should be subject to tax in that country, okay? Providing sales or service on there. However, even that is not necessarily the case, okay? Uh, if you read a lot of the tax treaties, what you'll find is they basically say, unless you have a permanent establishment in that country, if you're not a resident of that country, they don't have the right to tax you, okay? Now, this introduces the question of what if you are in a situation where you don't have a tax treaty between countries, right? Then what happens? You know, in theory, a bunch of places uh, would levy taxes on you in that case if they could enforce it. One of the things that I've said for quite a few years as we talk here about uh, who gets to tax your money, the attribution of income, and you know, there's where you're resident, there's where your company's resident, and there's where your income is resident. And of all the things, the toughest one by far to police is well, where's the income resident, right? So for instance, I may hire somebody in the Philippines, there may be like real work taking place there, but it's not taking place through a company, it's not like, it's just hard for somebody to quantify. So maybe you're supposed to be paying tax there, but you know, how are they gonna go after it? And it's usually in the best interest of that country not to go after it because you're employing their locals and then those locals are paying taxes, right? So I guess the simple answer to this is uh, if you're protected by a tax treaty, then usually it's fine, right? It's not an issue. That being said, uh, in most cases where you're not, so long as you don't cross over Okay, so two things. Uh, if you're not doing business in the sense of like, you're going and actually working in that local economy, meaning you're working remotely, right? You come in, and by the way, lots of countries are introducing these digital nomad visas where they're making this explicit, right? They're like, hey, you can come here, stay here for six months, and you know, do your work so long as you're not taking jobs from our people, and you know, it's fine, you're not taxable. It's only when you become a resident that you're taxable, and you, know, you may not stay long enough for that, but they're kind of probably hoping that you are, right? So generally speaking, what I would say is it's not something to worry about if you're just kind of passing through. If you're like, okay, I'm gonna spend a month, two months here, it's not a worry. People are not gonna come after you for this. 
so long as you're not, again, like actively going and doing sales uh, to the local economy. If you're working online or something and this, it's, uh, your location is incidental to the work as opposed to a requirement of the work, then generally just don't worry about it. Um, you're not gonna have it, you're not gonna have problems. Somebody's not, A, they're not policing it. It's like impossible for them to police it. It's just of all the things that they have to worry about, even if it was an issue for them, they're not gonna put the resources into it. It's too much trouble. If you're actually like, if you set up an office there, you know, you have like a, a permanent establishment there, then yes, be worried, right? If you're like, hey, I rented a you know, little store space here. Is that a problem? Yes, that's a problem. You definitely you know, should be subject to tax in that situation in most countries. And so you know, they have something they can go after. So be careful about that. If you buy a rental property, you know, that is gonna be subject to tax. If you are in a situation where, I mean, obviously if you're a resident or if you're a company resident, okay, that's fairly clear. Uh, but if you're in a situation where you can say, all right, uh, we're going, say, door to door selling things, you may need a local business license in that place and they may come after you for that. So what I would say is if your work is online and it really has nothing directly to do with where you are, like from the perspective of the customers, you could be anywhere, don't worry about it. If from the perspective of the customers, it matters where you are, be careful about, do you have a permanent establishment? Uh, if you do, then certainly that's a, a big concern. If you don't have a permanent, by the way, I have a video on permanent establishments if you wanna answer what that's all about. And uh, if you don't have a permanent establishment, you know, still be a little cautious about what you're doing, uh, but you can probably get away with it. So anyway, I hope that helps. I hope it answers the question. If you have questions, you can put them in the comments below. Uh, again, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please, we appreciate if you share the video, help your friends out, and I'm gonna look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.